is. Ah, uh, yeah, baby. This is the episode. Woo! Little love tap. That's how we tap when we're in love. Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today is the day that we're gonna try and get the body off of the Jeep. So we're gonna take the Jeep body all the way off, hopefully today. If we've got all the right tools and we've got all the right supplies, there should be no reason why we can't get the body off the Jeep. We're gonna take it off, we're gonna inspect the frame and see what all kind of work we're gonna need to do. We're gonna be using a ton of PB Blaster. PB Blaster reached out to me and it's pretty funny. They said, man, you got a lot of rust right there. So they sent me a case of PB Blaster to work on the Jeep. That's pretty awesome. Thanks PB Blaster. Guys, come along today as we work on getting the body off of old popcorn the Jeep. All right, we have had some dreary, nasty, nasty days. And let me show you just what it looks like outside here on the farm. Just dreary, rainy, and nasty. And here's something that is a total shame. Ah, the Grand National had to go outside while we take the Jeep apart. Ugh, hate for that thing to be getting in the rain, but I guess a little rain never hurt it. Let's go on back here into the shop. This is a steel building, and if you look around inside this steel building right here, you'll see it has welded trusses right up there at the top. This is a steel building. It's a 26 by 36, basically three bays, but we chose to only put two garage doors on here, and these are two 10-foot garage doors. When you're doing a restoration like this, like this Jeep, you kind of need a place for new parts, a place for old parts, and a place for restoring parts, and basically that kicks the Buick Grand National out of the garage for a little while until we can get the body off the Jeep. So my mind tells me the first place I need to start is the radiator here. So we'll take off the lower radiator hose and we'll have to unbolt the radiator from the radiator support. Then we'll start breaking loose some of this stuff. So this is not supposed to be here. This is a weld and all this stuff was bolted together. So we're gonna have to pull some stuff apart. This bumper is very handy yet not factory and you can see this is an extension. Here's the original bumper. So eventually we'll have to grind that off. The chassis looks pretty solid to me all the way through this Jeep. That's my soda pop for later. But we've got a few things we've got to disconnect here. So choke cable has already been cut. We've got a little bit of wiring. All that stuff's garbage. We've got a new wiring harness. We bought a ton of parts for this Jeep. Now, the next problem that's posed here is removing these seat bolts that hold the seat in place, these are not factory seats, I don't think, or this is a special made mount for these seats. So we gotta disconnect the fuel line underneath here, and we gotta pull the seats off. We gotta figure out how to get the clutch and the brake pedal out of here, okay? So we've gotta disconnect the linkage on the gas pedal, and then there's another little button under there for starting the Jeep. We've gotta disconnect that. We got to take this loose, this little cover, and we've got a new one of those. And we got new rubber seals here too. And you can see the floorboards are pretty rotten. As we're working our way through this restoration on popcorn here, you can see the gauges. Let me show you a close up of those things. Here are the gauges. And we've got some original gauges that work. Pretty much every gauge works, but it's all kind of garbage and this is all busted out. So we've got all new goodies to go in right here. Really kind of went all out on parts and stuff for this thing because I want it to be a quality restoration. I am actually restoring it for someone. When we first did this, it was gonna be for us, but I've got a good buddy. He's got a ranch out in Wyoming and he expressed some interest in one this Jeep. So we're kind of gonna be building it for him. So I know I gotta mind my P's and Q's and do a good job. Let me show you some of the tools that we're gonna use to disassemble the Jeep. Now I'm just a guy, just like like you, I'm out of my shop working. I don't have a huge motor trend budget or anything like that, but we've got a little Makita Sawzall we're gonna be using. We've got an impact driver from DeWalt we'll be using, flashlights to get up underneath there. And I think the most handy tool we're gonna have, and we just bought this the other day, is an air hammer. So we'll be using this air hammer to get those stubborn bolts that won't come out. And I'll imagine there are a lot of stubborn bolts on this thing that just won't come out. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around with PB Blaster and I'm gonna hit all these little spots, all these little nuts and bolts that I think need to come out. And then we'll take the radiator hose loose, let the radiator drain, and we'll start busting this job out. All right, popcorn, this is for you, buddy. Nice. 
That thing is a super soaker for PB Blaster. Yeah, we'll just soak everything down here. We've got nuts and bolts under here. We've got nuts and bolts everywhere. Let's get under here and see if we can find our main chassis connecting points. I think six chassis connection points. Let me show you real quick. There's number one, number two. I think that there are two more back there to the rear. And, hmm, <laughs> and I don't see them. And up front here, there's another one right there. And this is a spring, if you can see that. This is a spring that is for my clutch pedal. Just grease this dude down, let's burn through this can. <laughs> Including the wheels, because they've got to come off and the wheels are going to get sandblasted here. We've got a blast cabinet that I just ordered from Eastwood, Eastwood products. They make a bunch of rust inhibitor type stuff. So I'm looking down here in the bed and there is a bolt for chassis connection and another bolt for chassis connection. We'll probably cut those bolts. Now if I walk over here to my new Willie's body, I don't see those holes anywhere. So not too sure about all that, but we're going to take all this as it comes. Awesome. Nice. got a sneaking suspicion that my air hammer is going to be my most used tool here once I start disconnecting parts. Here's the old-fashioned way of draining the radiator. We're not going to reuse these radiator hoses. They're old and garbage anyway. So down underneath my radiator right here is a nice pan. And we're just going to cut that hose. Got new radiator hoses. So we filled the radiator up when we first got the Jeep up here. So when we drove it, I want to make sure that the water pump was pumping water. We'll replace the water pump for sure for reliability's sake, but here we go. So we're busting out my old trusty socket set. This socket set I have opened upside down, I know 15 times. So I took a marking, a paint marking pin and put that and put top all over the top so I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Radiator held the antifreeze. It wasn't very crusty, which is super duper awesome. There we go. Woo! Man, that's nasty. Man, that thing is stuck on there. Good gracious. We've got parts that are okay parts that are good and parts that are garbage. Okay parts are gonna go in an okay bin and garbage parts are going in the garbage and good parts are gonna go in the good slash okay bin. This is the good slash okay bin. These are hose clamps. You never know when you might need more hose clamps on the farm. You might get in a pinch and you don't have to go to the store and get one. Come on buddy. Cut a couple slits in this radiator hose maybe she'll come loose this is old stuff eh. well that's why I wouldn't come loose there was a spring okay there's a spring inside the radiator hose that's probably what was all rusty that's the trash can we'll have to take the radiator and have it fully serviced this is in the garbage pile. However, I will hang on to most of the fasteners that I take off of here just in case I need them. Guys, I'm just going to get rocking on this, get busy underneath the hood, get all this stuff disconnected, and start in on the body. It won't take too long. I'm going to figure it about six hours. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> You ever get a new tool and you just want to see what it'll do? <laughs> I am way curious about this air chisel. It just seems mean. Nasty. So, I'm inclined to try to cut a bolt with it real quick. Woo, that thing's a beast. Oh, it's under there. I don't think my compressor is big enough. <laughs> 
All right, I broke out the bigger compressor. Hopefully this doesn't trip the breaker. It's bad about doing that. Contact. Let's see what this thing will do with a little more power behind it. Oh man, yeah. That tripped the breaker. Try again. I honestly think it's going to be easier to pull the radiator if I pull the fender off first, which means we got to cut that weld. The thing about PB Blaster, it does smoke a little bit when you're working on stuff. Looks like we're free right there. We just got some bolts to undo all the way down through here. All right, it's time for impact. Something I've learned, I have this adapter on here on this DeWalt so that I can use the new style batteries with the old style equipment. If you do not unplug this battery, it will drain. It will kill the battery. Something I've learned in my experience fooling with this little adapter kit. So good information to have. If you've got old DeWalt tools and you don't want to get rid of them, you can buy this adapter kit right here that will convert your old style DeWalt battery to the new style DeWalt battery like this. That's what the kit looks like. Pretty cool. I'll post a link to it down in the video description in case you want to pick one up. But of note, it's hard to get in and out and it will put a voltage drain on your battery. So it'll kill your battery if you don't just disconnect your battery. And all you gotta do is basically just slide it out or put the battery on charge anyway. You really should be storing your batteries on charge. So let's get this thing apart. These are half inch bolts. Pretty cool. We got one, two, three bolts here. There's two bolts in the center on a little I-beam kind of thing. And then there's one bolt where the foothold is on right there. And that bolt is rusty, rusty, crusty. So it takes a half inch wrench. And I guess you're just gonna have to keep on wrenching. <laughs> I almost saved that hammer. All right, we got a couple more to get the fender off right here. So here's what we're under here working with. There's a nut there and a nut there or a bolt there but it's spinning fairly freely so I think there's a nut on the other side of the fender good to know we'll be replacing ugh, all of these when it comes to restoration time but these are my two challenges right now I need you guys to say the mechanics prayer for me that this chassis is good to go I sure hope it is oh yeah they're coming right out Nice. Should be able to just pull it. Come right off. All right. Come on, baby. A little love tap. That's how we tap when we're in love. There we go. Good deal. Fender number one is off. Now, you see what I mean? You see why I can't save this stuff? It's just too El Rochi Rocho gone, man. Now the whole reason we pulled that fender first is so that we could get to these two bolts that hold the radiator in. Pretty simple. So we'll have the radiator, the fan, we'll have to disconnect a couple linkages and the steering column next. Okay, in theory, I've got the steering column loose. And in theory, it should come right off. In theory, whew, I'll get it out. All right, I got the steering column loose. On the end of the steering column, it's flanged out, and there is a little cap that holds it in place. You guys got to see how gross this thing is inside this steering box. So this is the steering box, and that is the steering column that just came out of the steering box. I have no idea how I'm going to get it up through that hole. <sighs> Definitely poses a challenge, but this is what I had to undo. There were three little nuts right there or bolts right there that were holding that in place and there's a little gasket seal right here i think we got a rebuild kit for the steering box radiator good to go radiator's out and shroud is out awesome fan shroud still had grass seed in it from i guess from the 1980s 
<laughs> awesome. So what we've got left from here is getting the brake pedal and the clutch pedal released. We've got to take the seats out, fender off. After the fender, there's one bolt just behind the fender, four bolts in the back, and it's done, totally done. But I don't think I'm gonna get it done tonight. So we'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. <laughs>